Today is January 11, 2011. We're at the Grand Island Veterans Home with Walter Joseph Velasic. Mr. Velasic served in the Army. Uh, he also served in both World War II and the Korean conflict. He was in the 1st Division Infantry. His highest rank was a Tech 4. He enlisted March or June of 1940. In the 1st Infantry, 6th Division. 1st ah, Infantry, 6th Division. He served in both the South Pacific uh, and Korean encampment, uh, Fort Benning here abro and abroad in the Hawaiian Islands, Fort Leavenworth in Kansas. Uh, my name is Larry Mulchik. I work with Mr. Velasic here at the Veterans Home. We're in the library. Uh, and again, Walter, could you tell us about your growing up years, a little bit about where you grew up and, and what your family life was like? Well, when we got inducted in Omaha, went to Leavenworth, Kansas, tried our clothes and stuff. And then the next day we were on the way to Leavenworth, I mean, uh, Leonardwood, Missouri. When we got to Leonardwood, Missouri, they just started the camp. They just built the buildings, dirt. They didn't have no gravel, no nothing else, pavements or nothing there. And there was only nine men there. The rest of us was all recruits when we got started. How many recruits would have been there? Uh, Leonard Wood, Missouri. Yeah. yeah, how many recruits were there? Uh, that is at Leonard Wood, yeah. Yeah. Of course, I wound up going down to the motor pool and started driving. The, the company, well, they didn't have a Jeep, it was a pickup. So I was pre pretty lucky I didn't have to get too much training. But they kept me running all the time anyway. Because that is the only vehicle they had, the company. Of course, they called, called it a weapons carrier at the time. Because it's supposed to be hauling the third, <coughs> third platoon, and it was a heavy mortar mortar. 80 or 40, I think there was 80 meter mortars and machine guns. So that's the reason they had a weapons carrier. I didn't, we went on maneuvers and through to Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, and I mean that was <laughs> And that was what? The entry had a long man. They they walked half the night. Hell, they used to walk 20 miles every every day for here. Get them up in the middle of the night. Get them up and walking. That was their training, you know. Of course, I was I was a driver, so we followed them and no lights. And like we stop every 10 minutes, every hour for 10 minutes. And, you get tired enough, you go to sleep on the dam. Boy, <laughs> we were rested. Company would get away and you're wondering where they're at when you woke up. Of course, when we, we were busy when the company was rested, I mean, when we got to the bivouac area, we had to go get ration and water and all that stuff. So, so we, we had a full-time job for 20 hours a day on the go all the time. And of course, when we got back to Leonard Wood, Missouri, then, then I, I went to Fort Benning, Georgia for three months of school, mm -hmm. mechanic school. Then I went home on furlough, then back to Leonard Wood, Missouri again. From there we went on maneuvers to Tennessee, Kentucky, down in that area. Then we went back to Leonard Wood. In the meantime, we was on parade in St. Louis. I don't remember whether it's Thanksgiving or Christmas time. 
That is something different too. Huh? But then we packed the Leonard Wood, then we went to California from there. Out in the desert. Yuma, Arizona. Mm -hmm. We got there on the railroad. And I was driving a truck then, hauling the people to where our bivouac area. All it was was nothing out there. Just a stick saying F company. <laughs> And I, I hauled it back and forth, kept running all night. Next, about three o'clock in the morning, I lay down to went to sleep, and I woke up at about five, and I figured Fru was dead. That's how much the weather changed down there. I mean, daytime was real hot, night was cold. And of course, we was out there in the desert then for three months, I think, right around the desert. No lights, no nothing at night. Wonder half of us didn't get killed off. Mm -hmm. We were getting ready to go to Italy, you know, in the desert. They were fighting. In the meantime, they, the, the war was won there in Italy, so they sent us out, to, out in the desert to train. We trained out there in Dunes to Arizona about three months. Then we went back to St. Louis Obispo, California. From there, we took off to San Francisco. From San, from San, from San Francisco, we went to Oahu, Hawaiian Islands. Then from Hawaiian Islands, I got tra transferred to the 40th Division. Of course, I was on. A, when I, I think I was on Hawaiian Islands for about two months. And then when I got transferred to the 40th and hit the Cannon Company, then we were in a, I think we went to New Britain Island for a while, Camp Glodia. Then we went to, the, you know, let's see here. We, we didn't do much fighting. We went to another island, New Ireland, New, New Britain Island. It is under the Austrian or English. We always drove on the wrong side of the road. Yeah. Then all at once on one Sunday morning, I changed it. <laughs> I come pretty good kill that time. <laughs> Going down the road with the jeep and on the wrong side of the road, met, met a six by, and he was moving right along, but I never forgot about the damn beam and change. He pulled around us. If he'd hit a, if I'd have tried to pull over about the same time, we'd have really had it wrecked. So I guess we were lucky then. Yeah. Now you said that you were you were in Hawaii for a while. Yeah. And was that after was uh, that after uh, Pearl Harbor that you were in Hawaii? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, yeah. We went to Hawaii Island in in forty three. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and of course we were on the road all the time, different islands. The hell I don't know. And we, were, we went to where there were fights then. But we, we didn't do any fight there. We just got, got there and they had the island pretty well secured. So we, we stayed there for about a week and then we all moved on. Then, of course, we were trained in there, different islands, right around there. I think we crossed the equator half a dozen times. One day it'd be on one side, and next day on the other. <clears throat> were there rituals about crossing the equator you had to go through? Yeah. Yeah. What kind of things did right. they do to celebrate you? Oh, they had a big powwow, initiation stuff when they crossed the. 
equator the first time. After that, we didn't do that no more. Mm -hmm. okay. But we crossed it two or three times. And and then we went to Guadalcanal. And Guadalcanal, we went to some other islands there in the Solomon Islands. I don't remember what island it was. But anyway, we, we went to Lingay and Golf. That's when we hit the Philippines. Mm -hmm. On the ninth day of January, in 45, I think. It and we landed in Lingay and Golf. And, and then we took we went to two, two or three other islands in the Philippines, and the war was over. We was getting ready to go to Japan. And didn't have enough points to go back to the states. We draw enough of it. some new men, new machinery, new guns, and everything. Get ready to go to Japan. And the war. Then when didn't have enough points, so I had to stay there. We went to Korea. And the way to Korea, we ran into a typhoon. We had a backup. Of course, we was on an LSM, you know, we, the whole company. We, we was always on the LSM overseas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, when I was in the Philippines there, I was in the hospital there for a week with a malaria. And we got on, got ready to go to. Korea then got on the ship and geez, I did really got sick. That was the first time I ever got sick on a ship. When I was first oh, you were seasick? Yeah. You were seasick? Yeah. I didn't care whether I lived or died. When we got, when we got to Korea, we were supposed to land at, on, at Pusan. We waited there for two days to tide to come in so we could go, move on in. And then, then we had to go clear around the other side to buy sold. And when we went in down there, I had a destroyer going in ahead of us, setting off the mines. And of course, that's pretty well over with. When we got to Korea, we didn't we didn't do much. There was no place to go. <clears throat> now, this was actually before the Korean War that you went to Korea? Well, I had to, to Koreans was, Seoul was pretty well shot up. They were fighting the Japanese. North and South Korea. Yeah. That's the reason we was over there. The, the, so we, what year did you go to that Korea? That was in 45. That was in 45. Yeah. And I got back to the States in November of 45. We got back to the States and Fort Lewis, Washington. <laughs> so stayed there overnight. Of course, a lot of the men, they were, they were supposed to stay in camp, you know, in Fort Lewis. Shit, the MPs didn't mean nothing. They walked out the gate, went down and bought new clothes and stuff. Said they had us on a train the next morning going to, to, to Colorado. And that's when we got discharged. And two days later, we were civilians. That's how long it took them to get rid of us. <clears throat> Did you go back to Spalding yeah. at that point? And yeah, back to Spalding and back farmed ever since. I mean, I, I had done other work too. I mean, hell, I drove a truck and stuff around home. But, I started farming in 46. I got home in November 45. Then I got married in 47. Yeah. What was your wife's name? Yeah. Trous, Eva Trous from Roseland, Nebraska. Tell me about how you met her. Hmm? How did you meet her? And, well, I, when I came back from Fort Benning that time, Stella was working in Omaha, that's my sister, and Eva come out to the farm with her. That's how I met her. Then, of course, we just, just went to marry then instead of waiting until I got out of the service. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't. 
that. And they had a family of seven children. And of course, Don was in Vietnam War in the 70s. They run a man, mine detector out there when he got back way. Well, I don't know. He, he died in 92. Leukemia. Mm -hmm. And you know, his wife never did get nothing. They had. Vicki McCarran, 458. Vicki McCarran, 458. Had four children. And she, never, she never got nothing on you. Out of the army. Was he still. Um, do you think it was something service connected that. Gave him leukemia? Yeah. Yeah. He got too much of that stuff that was spraying around there. I guess. Uh, I leave it up in, in Minnesota in the hospital for about two months or three. Then they sent him home. He died a week later. So that about ends my life anyway. I've been farming ever since. But I raised a family, seven children. The rest of the family still. Don's only one, he died in 92. My wife died in 89. I stayed farming. Of course, the kids all. All graduated from the university. All but Don, he, he went to Carney, and then after he was there for two years, he went to service. And wound up in Vietnam. Yeah. Can we back up just a little bit to when you were still in the service? I, you know, you kind of you kind of moved around to a lot of different islands to do training and oh yeah and we so were, forth you know what well, was the first island where you actually had where well, you actually encountered some some combat which was the first island that 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 happened it was, Luzon was the first island that we made initial landing on we were in Guadalcanal they were fighting there but we never we didn't know. We just went in there to kind of protect them, I guess. They decided we didn't need us. We stayed there about a week and we went on. Yeah. Then we went to New Britain Island. And then we were sitting on one side of the hill, about about four. Let's see, there's just a, two companies of us, and there was about ten or twelve thousand Japs on the other side of the hill. And a lot of them guys pulling guard away. They just got sinking too hard. You know, they got go crazier than hell. I mean, they didn't do nothing else but pull guard all the time for a couple months. And then the ninth day of '45 is when we landed in Mingan Gulf, Luzon Island, Philippines. There's did did you were you on an LST? Did you come in on a what kind of a landing vehicle did you come in I'm on? Landing LSM. LSM. Were you under yeah. fire when you actually it, got onto the beach? When we first got the LSM, they, we didn't go in far enough and dropped the ramp. The, the jeep driver took off and we lost the jeep. And he he swam out. We lost everything that had the jeep, you know. Then they pulled out again and got closer to the island. Then we walked in ahead of the M7 tanks and tr stuff, water. It was deep, way steep after that. But we didn't maybe eat any opposition until the next day. And then again. Next morning, we woke, woke up in the morning and the Japanese were. Little, little zeros or whatever the hell they call them, flying around there, strafing. I 
if we was lucky, so. So you didn't you didn't encounter any Japanese till the next morning when you landed. Huh? Right? Did you say that you didn't encounter any Japanese till the next morning when those zeros came? Well, you may run into Japanese the next day. Yeah. After we landed on Luzon. But we was only on Luzon about two or three days when we went to Negro's Island. We was there, I think, for a week or two. And then we went to Pan A, Island of Pan A. And that's where we were at when the war was over. We, all we done was went in there and secured the island, which didn't take long because it's pretty small. And the more the day was over, we was in Santa Barbara. Pan A Island, the town was set a bar room, drawing equipment to get ready to go over to Japan. Did did you serve in Japan then for a while as part of the occupying army? Is that mm -hmm. were you? Did you serve in Japan for a while when the war ended? Oh, about a week. So then we went on to Korea. And we said, on. I think it took us about, well, we got halfway to Korea and run into the typhoon and had to come back. Damn, done everything but turn the ship upside down. It was LSM, is what it was. That's when you got seasick? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so nice. I was never seasick before that. I, was, I, I spent 120 some days on the island. I mean, on the ship, all together, different times. But I never got seasick till last time. The last time I was on one of the damn things. Uh -huh. And of course, when we come back from Korea, we come on, come home on the ship. We went around by the Lucian Islands. Before that, it always go hotter than hell on them ships. That time, it pretty froze. Because we went around by crew, by the Lucians, yeah. Alaska that way, and we landed in Seattle. So, <clears throat> you actually were in Korea as part of your service before the war, the Korean War actually started. Is that? Well, I, we was in on maneuvers before that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I went in in January, in June. June the 12th. Of 19... And of course, the World War didn't, didn't start till the December. Yeah. You went, what was the date that you landed in Korea? Hmm? What date did you land in Korea? I don't remember. I what, wouldn't have no idea when it was. What year was that? It was in 45. Uh -huh. And how long did you it stay? It was shortly, it was after the war. The war was over in July, wasn't it? Yeah. I think I think we was took us damn near a month to get to Korea. I mean because we had to back up, take another route. They ran into a typhoon down there. Some damn place. Don't ask me where because I don't know where he's at. We didn't know. We didn't know where we was going no time. We just got in well we were going someplace. Yeah. But they wouldn't tell us nothing. Until we got there. Yeah. Well, when you, I know that you enlisted instead yeah, of I getting volunteer. drafted, so you volunteered. I volunteered in, in 41 in March, but, but there were so many volunteers ahead of me that I never got into June. And then I, was, I was the last volunteer in Greeley County. Mike Naughton was the first draftee. Then I stayed in the States for a couple of years and run around maneuvered. And Mike was on a ship over going to Hawaiian Islands Christmas Day. Hmm. So I don't know, I guess just luck is all. And I was lucky enough to get in the motor pool so I didn't have to do too much basic stuff. Now, of course, I'll run through the routine, but it didn't. Have it all done. Didn't have to walk much. Well, I'm telling you, I had Louisiana maneuvers. 
there's rough on the bottom, on the infantry. Uh, shit, they'd get them up at 3 o'clock in the morning and walk to them about 3 o'clock that afternoon. Of course, it stopped for 10 minutes every hour. And we, all we had was a little lights on it, on the weapons carrier, right through by it. And we had to follow them all the time. We, we followed it to walk. And they were walking and we was driving. And, oh yeah. Some guy would fall out, you know, and we'd pick him up, haul him along. And old Colonel would come along when we stopped, get the hell out of there. <laughs> we'd go down the road another mile or so and we'd pick him up again and they'd fall out. And they would, cause one old fellow that, you see, at that time, they, they let them out when they were over 28. But some of them guys never got out. They, hell, they was, some of them were in the 30, 30 years old, you know, they're pretty old to be walking and carrying a VAR. We had one little guy about, he was about 38 years old, and they give him a damn VAR, he only weighed about 90 pounds. Yeah. And, we picked him up pretty every, every day. Yeah, we, he'd ride with us till we maybe. Coral and Fogelbaum, please report to the ambulance entrance. Coral and Fogelbaum, please report to the ambulance entrance. The colonel would come along and he'd make him get out. Walk again, then we'd pick him up here. And they always had, they were walking, you know, they had a full feed pack. They carried about 70 pounds on their back all the time. They were already ready for... Yeah, it was really rougher on the infantry than it was when you got into combat. I mean... Just moving around was hard. Uh, because they were on the go all the time, day and night. Did you stay in touch with your parents and family? Did you write letters or stay in touch with your family while you were there? Well, they'd write a letter, maybe they'd get it in two months. If they wrote a letter, it might take two, three months before we got it. Mm -hmm. We never, we never really did. See, we just went by a code number. They never really didn't know where we was going no time. After we left the stage, we just going someplace. That is, that's all they told us. Yeah. And after we got to Hawaiian Islands, from there on we was all the way on LSM. The whole company, whole company was on LSM. Seven and M7 tanks. Weapons carrier, supply truck, kitchen truck, I think it was 90 men, plus the officer. So, uh, yeah. California National Guards is where I wound up at, 85th Infantry, 185, 40th Division. Where I got discharged, and then you know, on my discharge, they don't say nothing about that at all. Hmm. Yeah, you had mentioned that that your paperwork was lost or destroyed. Well, they claim their paperwork got burned up in St. Louis. Hmm. There's nothing. That, uh, Agent tried to get to find somebody to do get some information. No information. Papers burned up. That's all he got. That is uh, the county county yeah. service officer. So when you came here to live, you were looking for those papers, and it was hard for you to document your service yeah. dates and that sort of thing. Never did find it in his papers, I didn't know. They said they were burned up. And as far as going to the 80, to the 40th Division, it don't say nothing about it on the infantry.
So when you did get back home, tell me about that day that you saw your parents for the first time. Hmm? When you first came home, saw your family for the first time. Tell me about that day. Well, it was snowing. <laughs> See, I, I hadn't been anywhere for, for three years where it was cold, mm -hmm. or four years probably. Then when, I, when we left Korea, Korea was, was November, and it was just like, I guess, just the weather there is just like it is here, about the same. It is cold. And when I got home to Spalding, and after I got discharged, it was, it was snowing and cold. I rode the train from Omaha, from, I got discharged in, in, in Colorado, and then I went to Columbus, Nebraska, and got on that fast plane, a tr train they had there. Got to Spalding and left there by 12 o'clock. Got to Spalding at 6 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. I didn't go very fast. Was there a party? Mm -hmm. Was there a party when you got home? No. Nah. I didn't party. It was just another day. Just another day. <clears throat> that it. There, there wasn't too much partying done <laughs> after I got home. Of course, the family was always glad to get back, for me to get back, but we didn't have enough money to party much at that time. Is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you'd like to say something about today before we close? Ah, uh, no, not really. I didn't think I'd ever farm when I was in the service, you know. Rhonda Sherman, 376. Rhonda Sherman, 376. When I got out of the service in 45, I couldn't even buy a job. No, that's the only reason I started farming. With my folks, of course, and Dad, they helped me. The folks helped me. I bought the first farm in 46, I guess. Lamb. And then, of course, they had that school, like four years. Uh, you know, I'd go to school for four years, get paid for it. That's how come I got started farming. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the folks, Dad farmed uh, all the time. Uh, he come from Europe, from Poland. He came over here in the 90s, I think. Landed in Illinois to work in coal mines for 16 years before he come to Nebraska. Yeah. What was your father's name? Andrew. Andrew. And where was he from? He was from Warsaw. He was from Warsaw, Warsaw Poland. Yeah. Well, Poland. Well, you know, that's Mike was from there too. Mike, his brother. Mm -hmm. He had. They were married in Poland. Sophie was born over there in Poland before they come over. Of course, Dad was in the Australian Army. Poland was under Austria at that time. Yeah. And he, he had to change his name to get out of there, Poland. Then when he got back over here, then he got his name back. Same name. I don't know what name he used to come back over here. And of course, him, my mother fired and finally in about three, three or four months afterwards. And it, and it was Martin Fabinski. He married my dad's sister or a grandmother. Right. So that's how come he wound up in Nebraska. But was for. I think his dad, his name was Martin Ferminski, mm -hmm. that he come to uh, the landed over there by Fuller somewhere. I mean, that's where he lived for, started farming there by Wallback. 
just a year before I was born. That's about all there is to it. Well, Walter, I want to thank you for sharing with us today. Thank you for your service. Hi. Thank you for your service. You know, I don't I, get an of opportunity. Of course, I did tell you that I was, I was called back in 50, 50 to, in the Korean conflict, but yeah. I didn't go nowhere but, but in uh, Camp McCoy, Wisconsin. And then I went back in. I was in a chemical company. Well, there was no comparison with the infantry in the chemical company. And I was in the motor pool, motor sergeant then. But they really didn't need me. There were too many of us. They called a lot of us back in and held it. Was, they had a lot of us there. I was there for, well, I went in in Jerry, January and got out in November. That's how long I was called back in. And <clears throat> I had two children, and I was farming. I still, caught, they got, and of course, I stayed reserved, and I still had to go back. So I don't know. Nothing fair about what they were doing. Of course, the draft board had a lot of it to do with it, I suppose. They drafted you that, that, that next time. Draft line. board. Yeah. And then when I got home, Andy stayed home. That was my brother. Uh, and went on the farm. And the, uh, the I got out in November, and I think he got called back in. The, they called him back. He went to Vietnam. And then there was families that had three or four boys. None of them went to service. So I, so I don't know. There was nothing fair about that. There was two of us. As, as long as I was in service, he didn't have to go because he'd go down to, the, to Kansas, get deferred for another six months. Mm -hmm. Then as soon as I got home, I, he, yeah. had, he had to go to service. They let him stay home as long as I was gone. Yeah. How can you have you ever thought about how the army changed your life? You know, what your a farm kid grew up in Nebraska, never saw the rest of the United States, all of a sudden you're sent overseas and Probably got your eyes open to a lot of things you'd never seen before. Oh yeah, there was a lot of things different. It was different altogether. And of course, I, I was, I was the CCs for for a year before I ever went to the army. So I was, I pretty well knew what the army was all about, because the CCs was under under army regulations. We had army officers. Had to stand her heavily and um, got us up by the bugle, went to bed with the bugle. The CC, that was the Conservation Corps, is that? Yeah. Yeah. Civil Service, yeah. They called it the CCCs. Yeah. It is just, when I was in there, I got $8 and $22 went home. That's the, that's why I got in because I didn't have much. Mm, yeah. What kind of projects did you work on during that time? Well, when I, I was in David City. I mean, on conservation works, build nam stuff like that. But it was in the winter time. Hell, we didn't do nothing. We didn't go out in the field. Then when we went up in South Dakota. Camp Lodge was up there. Hell, it'd be 40, 50 billion, low zero, and we'd ride the truck up to the Sullivan Lake and build buildings in the cold weather. We had never had a, never had much time, I mean, no time off. It never got too cold. You'd get in the truck, drive it, go by, 
15, 20 miles every day, go up there and build buildings all the, for so many hours, and then of course we hit back to camp. Camp Lodge was a, east of South, Custer, South Dakota, five or six miles. But at that time, they were held, there must have been five or six different CC camps around there, all over the Black Hills. So I knew what, pretty well what the Army was like before I went to see you to the Army, before I got in. Yeah. Well, again, I, I want to thank you for your service and taking the time to talk with us about it today. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to thank you, and I appreciate you taking the time to share with us today. Yeah, it is a lot like it is under Army regulations.